morning. It is Tuesday, September 28th. I'm Danielle Wiggins with your three news now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC Facebook and YouTube pages. OK, let's start with a quick check of your forecast as temperatures are more fall like today. Holly. Danielle, thank you. And after a couple of sprinkles earlier today, we are in for tons of sunshine. September 28th and just looking lovely and much more seasonal after a very summery Monday. We're going to feel more like autumn again with highs around 70. And look at how we just clear things out into the afternoon and evening. And then overnight and into the start of your Wednesday, you'll be grabbing that extra comforter. Lows in the 40s, 50s. It's going to feel great and uh, this is where we should be as we're starting uh, off our days is in that low 50 range tomorrow an abundance of sunshine and highs in the low 70s will continue with clear sunny skies clear on through Thursday. So that all being said, turning sunny today, if it has not already by you, some of you did see a few sprinkles this morning and 70 for our high. Here's a look at the extended forecast now and we'll be in the low 70s as I mentioned tomorrow, mostly sunny, more sunshine ahead for Thursday, Friday, highs in the 60s to near 70, partly cloudy skies on Saturday with highs in the 70s, just some scattered shower chances Sunday and into early next week. Otherwise, variably cloudy skies. And uh, Danielle, we're going to keep it nice and seasonal. Back to you. Very nice. Thank you so much, Holly. Now we turn to the latest on the coronavirus. Ohio reported 3,681 new cases Monday. That's the lowest daily case number in the past three weeks. And our vaccination rate is still just shy of 50% at 49.94. This accounts for those who are considered fully vaccinated. But the bad news, hospitalizations are up. Cleveland Clinic says they are caring for their highest number of COVID inpatients since last winter. And hospitals in Lorraine, Summit, Portage, and Trumbull counties continue to see an overload of COVID patients. Near Akron, same story for SUMA Health System. They said some elective surgeries will be postponed. They will also be cutting 20% of the available number of beds at its Akron and Barberton campuses. At Mercy Health in Youngstown, Town, they told us that out of all their patients currently on ventilators, 100% are unvaccinated. This isn't September of 2020. This is September of 2021. We have a tool in our toolbox now. Uh, that tool is the vaccine. Folks are starting to utilize the emergency department for COVID testing. That is not where you want to go to get that clearance to get on the airplane or to get back into school. As we are seeing these hospitalizations continue to increase, doctors and health officials continue to plead with the public to get the vaccine. Doctors also urge anyone over the age of 65 and high risk to get a booster shot. And the latest surge of COVID-19 is impacting schools, forcing leaders to make some tough calls. In Beachwood Monday night, a new proposal was introduced mandating vaccines for school staff and some students. It is known as Vax or Test and will require school employees to either submit proof of vaccination or be tested on a weekly basis. As for students, only those who want to participate in extracurricular activities and are 16 and older would have the same Vax or Test rules. Testing would be free and vaccine status would be kept private like other medical records. Superintendent Bob Hardis, along with two doctors, spoke at last night's meeting. The goals of this fax or test plan are really simple. And the first is to help create the safest, healthiest community that we possibly can. The second is to protect those around us who don't have the choice to be vaccinated. The vote on the new requirements will be at the next board meeting on October 11th. If passed, students and employees will need to have at least the first dose by October 29th. And Pfizer has begun a large study testing an oral drug to treat COVID-19 amongst those who have been exposed to the virus. The drug maker plans to study the pill in combination with a low dose of an HIV drug called Ritonavir. 
The pill would be designed to stop the virus from replicating by blocking a key enzyme. The company plans to enroll more than 2,500 people in the study. One third of the patients will receive a placebo, while the remainder will be getting a dose of the drug twice a day for either five or 10 days. And grant that your servant Anthony, our bishop, to whom you entrusted the care of this church, may enter the and today, funeral services will be held for the late Bishop Anthony Pilla. This was the scene at his wake yesterday at the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist in Cleveland, where the funeral service will also be today. That begins at 11. Bishop Pilla died last week at the age of 88. And here are three things to know going on today as well. There will be a court hearing today to review the emergency custody order in place for the RTA baby doe case. The county says the little girl is still with the same foster family and is doing very well. Officials now know who her parents are and are first working on finding relatives to take care of the child. The funeral for Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson's grandson will take place today as well. His wake will be held at 10 a.m. at Mount Sinai Baptist Church and a celebration of life will follow. Frank Q. Jackson was shot multiple times last Sunday night. No arrests have been made in his death. Governor Mike DeWine will be in town today. He'll tour the Tri-C Manufacturing Technology Center of Excellence at Cuyahoga Community College. The center works to develop people for manufacturing jobs. Governor DeWine will stop by around two. And Brown's defensive end, Miles Garrett, will reveal his Voices of CLE public art installation downtown today. It will be located in Playhouse Square on the United Way of Greater Cleveland building. The reveal is at two, and this isn't the first time Garrett was put up, well, he has put up some masterpieces in downtown. He has a second public art installation in the windows of the Cleveland Visitor Center, which went up back in April. Thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and beyond. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Danielle Wiggins, and I'll see you Wednesday morning on go starting at 4.30 a.m. Have a great day, everybody.